So we're first going to have Allison Carter up, and then we're going to show some films. But I'm going to start by reading um, a blurb that Harold Abramowitz wrote about Allison Carter's book Here versus Elsewhere, uh, just out on Instagram Press. I happen to be Matthew Timmons. I run the press, Instagram Press. Um, uh, and I think you see all the books over there. And we do a lot. We publish about 12 different projects a year. I say projects because sometimes that project is a film, sometimes it's a book, sometimes it's a print, sometimes it's an artist monograph, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, sometimes it's a pamphlet, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, I'm going to start by reading a um, a blurb by Harold Abramowitz about Here versus Elsewhere by Alice Carter. Human echolocation is an ability of humans to detect objects in their environment by sensing echoes from those objects. The blank complex language polyrhythmic, repetitive, reverberant, resounding, with an eerie proficiency, Alton Carter's writing forms a kind of linguistic human echolocation that articulates, navigates, and wayfinds space, physical, relational, emotional, and otherwise, all within a network of deceptively familiar frames. In her new book, Here Versus Elsewhere, it is the accumulation of emptiness, expertly and intentionally drawn, that definitively interprets the boundaries of the spaces, the reader occupies, as well as the nature of the entities, human and otherwise, that serve as persistent companions within those self-same spaces. Harold Rollins. Alison Carter is the author of The Fixed Formal Arrangement from Lady Press and uh, other um, short collections, including Some Total by Neohippus Labs, um, All Bodies with the Same and Have the Same Reactions from Insert Long Press, which is a chat book which you can see on the table, and Shadows of Shadows Are Weather from Horseless Press. She also has another book that just came out called We All, we All Are Worried About Repeating Mistakes That I Have Already Made, Breakfast Phones. Um, yes. And she's Alison Carter. So, The doctor came today to the old house in Monterey to diagnose my sister. Rain was coming, so I had to wait in the hallway for almost an hour before they called my name. Her belly aches with not sprouting any leaky plants, and she has ants. In the long needle is a caterpillar of multiple hues. It thrives there, it is born, not embryonic like you'd expect. I keep secrets from my doctor. A little stranger passing me on his way to the edge of the water said, I'm just going to get my feet wet. My daddy says I can. Be careful. But he said it to me. And the water is colder than bones and cleaner and further from the secrets I keep. Omnibus feelings towards you. Your deep, deep diving in open water scares me. I am seeing seagulls in stone division walls. You are not. I am seeing sailboats in a ship through the lone mist in the channel. So this one's called My Night's Empire. My best friend's rose and hawk, and I discovered a tunnel lined in puddles in which under each petal a cavity lined with petals, etc. Hawk, like myself, has residual fear of tunnels that get smaller, but rose as a cat. We spent the day exposing things to the sun, hiding behind architectural nuances when the neighbors walked by. The tunnel is either full of water or not. Who sees water and why? Currents, not tunnels. Our POV changes regarding the currents that quiver too fast for love. We pack the bags with food. Often the wind is calling someone's name, not mine, and under my feet is a cavity, lined in feet, and etc. We can grow. A hundred stuffed animals play along. Very healthy, glorious, in a very sunny day. My nice empire declines all invitations to war perennially. All bodies. Next door, they are cleaning their ports. Across the street, they are peering through blinds of the house where Needy Judy lives and grows like day ivy. 
screws and bolts and hinges. And can I, like I be you? Christopher. When Christopher asks girls to dance, they say yes, to krill, and open their blazers. Christopher takes a step back and bends and rushes, comes through the other side, so. I have to pause for a second, I'm sorry. I'm used to reading narrative, so I'm used to reading a long and um, sustained thing. So stopping every couple of seconds and reading the title of something and then starting over with another piece is, um, it's abrupt. <laughs> this one is called Growing Up. And then a slab of air with the crook of our tree, meanwhile fat as an elephant's knee, insulating my slug with the fat of your hand. Meanwhile, flat as the crumpling land. Indian summer. May Ann has a too much growing bone in her back. This fat? You mean my accordion? From the inside of the spider web thread, the rattle sound of the bird in the fern. The part of May Ann's back that grew was silent and hollow. It's there for a baby to roost in when Mayan is too pregnant at work. The city in the non season is quiet as left alone beans, and no one is trying to cram into a girl who can't win arguments with a blister the size of a tomato on her foot. But babies come from many places, and they are easy to grab at through the rattling branches. The Golden Gate Bridge. Susie, the ghost, climbed out, and now she's on the wall. Susie, I'm working, I whisper. Her eyes are screws, round flies. I reach a hand towards her, and she flattens. The brain holds memory, some instances of love. I'm sorry it's so simple inside me, Susie says, and if you don't love me, well, well. Susie's staring at me. Her specs, screw eyes, and white t-shirt. Get out, get out, get out, get out. <coughs> you don't love, 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 love me, says Susie. So I lift up her white t-shirt and place my hand on her stomach. My hand is cold but salty, and she takes shape. A little silver ghost in the air. It takes a long time for her to reconstitute, to opaque the joints that were translucent for others. I wait all night for Susie, who will come. I have to have patience, because Susie can moan, 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 can take away my love, can't, can't touch me back. And this one is called, What's Done is Done. On the island of What's Done is Done, there are no snow plows. Or when there are snow plows, there are no mechanics. Or when there are mechanics, there is no workers' compensation. Or when there is workers' compensation, there are no doctors. In short, the island is good or bad, as any other island. In a small cave lives a large dog named Sunset. From across the snowy plains, her long tail is long like a snow leopard's tail, and up close, her breath is warm like Earl Grey tea. Sunset's baby was kidnapped by breeders and taken to the mainland, but Sunset can't swim far enough to cross the water that separates the mainland from what's done is done. Still, in the mornings, Sunset opens all the gates to her expectations, and in the evening, she closes them daily. One blanched day, a skunk came across the snow to Sunset's cave. My name is Alaska, and I'm cold and lost. Can I sit in your cave with you? My daughter was named Alaska, her cried the big dog, and the skunk came inside and crawled into the breath that insulated the cave. The skunk was shaking away from her center in full of wind, and outside the snow fell silently, and the perfect dips and crests had no paw prints. And the water knocked at the shore all night, shyly onto the porch of the island and receding as if visiting an old friend. And the snow was piling up on the top of Sunset's cave. And the ocean was knocking as if visiting a lost lover or a brother or sister. And the snow kept piling on the roof of the cave. 
If the ocean was knocking as if it occurred of your mouth that you always were thin, that you tied up, knowing you're a fair sailor but a poor swimmer, while the snow in the ocean frothed and the hour kept proceeding, proceeding. Right. And so I'm going to finish with um, some elements of advice. The meal goes out every day at the same time. Try not to stand there in the mud waiting for the mailman to come. The hibernation season is not coming for several years. This is tough luck, and you need to sit there and stop. You're not allowed to drown. The house loves you, but not you, as in it loves the version of me that sucks on the house, looking for that taste of iron that sometimes I remember from rain. Travel in a car is not travel because you're sitting up straight. Travel in an airplane is travel because you need it take off and landing. Drowning is not travel, it's interception. Sliding through breakfast is travel. I can sit on you and rock, and sometimes that will be travel. Releasing somebody from obligation or pressure is an incision in the looper, which is travel. I fire an arrow at you. And sometimes you turn around, sometimes not. Christopher cannot lose the arrow and be the arrow simultaneously. A party is a buyer's market in which supply exceeds demand. It's up to you to reverse bad economics by refraining as quickly and quietly as you can from taking the drink that Christopher will be sure to offer you. It will be a high ball of a kick. Don't listen to the noise that comes out of his mouth that sounds like talking. Every sound he makes is expensive, and you are not very rich. <laughs> this bird has an asterisk beside it. What are you made of, sack of bird? You seem very movable. The air before you and the air after you are unequal over and over again. We buried your watch with you for a reason. When I showed up at your door yesterday, you didn't smile at me, offer me a drink, give me a little shove towards the toll at the end of the air. I showed up because I wanted to be with my daughter. I believe that we are worth another go. It's warm, but it's drizzling the documentary day, and no one's answering the door. I can't believe I would watch myself standing here. From the other side of the window is a kind of sunlight. It's movable, like you are not movable. Can you notice if people do things and or because? I make breakfast and I love breakfast. I make breakfast because I love breakfast. There's no, I make breakfast for loving breakfast. On the inside of desire is desire, and on the outside, fur. There's a hair stuck between your two front teeth. I pity you, but it makes me want to gag. <laughs> it's a shame that you think many of my choices are ashamed. You, after all, do not require anything on delivery, even delivery. This reciprocity, however, is only the crust of our relationship. Underneath is something lovely, like pie. The smallest bulldozer in the world is working its way up my ring finger. I can hear it when I try to sleep, the unemployment of nerve after nerve. I do not regret touching my own wedding ring in the grocery store, even though my wedding ring is fake, made of bee noises and the pain of cones. I do not regret explaining to the grocer that you, my daughter, ran away from me over a mistake in the eggs. Ignore your tubing. It's a lot like bones, and there's nothing you can do to pack it. We live in a city of wolves. On the inside of one of your teeth is a silver key that fits into a golden lock. Silver and gold are not important to you, so the wolves will try to convince you that the extraction won't hurt any more than the root canal. This isn't true. The wolves will offer you their own coats and recompense. Isn't that a lot to pay, you'll think. 
But a true wolf has more codes under that preliminary code. It has code after code, and they're all infected. The silver, which to them is a key to another safe, is for you the safe itself. You're not old enough to know what's in there, but one day you will be. If you give it away, you can expect a life without sunflowers, desire, breakfast pastries, hotel room service, or that boy Christopher who lives in the empty apartment and who watches you carefully, too carefully, for flaws. Don't trust women and men who watch you carefully, too carefully. Some of them are looking for you. Some of them are looking for other you. And some of them are looking for flaws that will let them inhabit a room of you. Inside you, there is running water and an intricate system of drawers. It's really luxurious and warm, very warm. But do you really want these women and men inside you, sucking on each other while you try to go to the bathroom? Honeysuckles have honey on them that you can pull on a steam in through the puncture at the end of the balloon. The honey can then be partitioned and distributed, a kind of incentive for the compounding of your security network. Honeysuckle grows wild in hot weather. I highly recommend that you take up gardening as a sport. At the end of the hole, you'll encounter a moth made of precious metals and time. The light on your bed spread. When you lie down where you relax, you'll try to engage the moth in a game that won't move. Not but, rather and. This is how to confirm that you've emerged on the other side of stillness, and you therefore are ready again to move. This does not mean that the buzz and pump of anticipation one third time. The stare of the moth indicates, more preciously, that the city has finally made an inquiry into your vast and citrusy plans for love. <laughs>